Yeah, just to be clear, uh, the issue is the... Okay, so let's just explain. Um, mm -hmm. What he was saying was that in your own backyard, uh, yep. you can fly BVLOS. You can fly behind the goggles. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have line of sight. Okay, there's two no. reasons why that's not the case. Okay, one is that you don't own the airspace. There's an old rule that there's a little case that people like to bring up called that's cause BV whatever, yeah. um, and, and that does not actually apply to FAA rules. The FAA claims they have down to the blade of grass even in your backyard, and they will fight you on it um, yep. if you really want to fight them on it. Okay. Um, uh, the second thing is what you're asking about is something called shielded operations, okay? And that means that if you're even in a park, if you're under trees, a place where planes couldn't go, right, you could fly BVLOS there. But unfortunately, in the United States, we had a BVLOS uh, rulemaking committee that uh, attempted to get shielded operations into the rules. But currently, there is no rule for shielded operations that applies. We would yep. love there to be shielded operations because it would allow us to fly in a lot of places that we can't currently. But that is not the case right now. Now, if we're talking about enforcement, the the chance of you getting in trouble for BVLS in any case is almost zero. The chance of mm -hmm. you getting in trouble in your backyard is, I would tell you, zero. Yep. Uh, zero. I, I'm just telling you what the rule is versus you know, how you're going to handle a day-to-day -day action. Uh, and the other thing I want to mention... Because there's two differences. Right. Hold on one second. Sorry, I apologize. I've interrupted you. There's two things. You need to know what the law says, and then you so that if you get caught, you know what kind of trouble you could be in. But then also, you need to know the realistic chances of actually getting in trouble. Go ahead, Blunty. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that we are about to get new BVLOS, BVLOS rules uh, in the next two to three months. Uh, as far as we understand, there's going to be a BVLOS NPRM put out, and that's the rulemaking process that starts. They basically propose a set of rules and say, hey, what should we be doing here? Like, how's this all going to work, and, and what do you think about the rules we're going to propose? And then there's a big comment period. They, I've heard that they expect this comments to be more than remote ID. They expect this to be huge because this is a big deal for people being able to fly without line of sight because remember commercial entities also want this right this is a big thing like if you mm -hmm. can fly without line of sight it's, it's big for everybody you don't need exceptions and exemptions anymore so we are going to be looking for that in a few months we're going to all be asking everybody's going to be asking to comment put forth information about that and hopefully we'll get new rules that allow things like shielded operations and more exceptions for recreational activity nice nice that's actually good news i didn't know that so i always appreciate the uh the work you put in and the uh, and you and the guys at the FPVFC uh, and uh, keeping us informed. Um, also, yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead. Also, as you said uh, before, it's not your fault that you heard that and it's wrong, right? The, right. The, the yeah, FAA Curtis. often gives out wrong information, especially, especially in interviews. It's, the interviews are terrible. They just like say whatever sounds good in an interview because they know nobody cares. It's not legally binding, and it won't ever matter. Yep. Uh, it's like uh, some, shocking some, the amount of wrong information they provide. Some would argue that it's intentionally a form of propaganda misleading. Now, that would require you to know what's in their hearts and their minds, which you can't. But like they go into an interview – and they're not bound to anything they say. And they say, no, it's not that bad. No, you can fly in your backyard. Of course. And everybody goes, what are people like, you know, Bardwell and Blunty making such a big deal out of the guy? The administrator of the FAA said it was fine. Yeah, well, that, yeah, but then also the actual lawyers and the actual investigators are, are finding people, you know, and so... Uh, Anyway, yeah, uh, the administrator of the FAA has been factually wrong about the rules many times in interviews and just just objectively factually wrong about the rules. So that doesn't mean anything. Um, it, you can actually, Blunty, can't you actually mail, like email an FAA field off and, and ask for yes. an interpretational ruling? And they'll yes. never actually give you, they won't ever actually give it to you. They'll always like give you the most restrictive but you can ask for an official legally binding ruling yeah you could ask the the thing that i will say is typically if you really care about complying and you really think there's an issue like this bvls thing you're not going to get a real answer because the answer is they don't like uh, the answer is basically what i told you that's what our we've been told by faa representatives that's why we have a bvlos arc coming or a uh, uh, mprm coming to do all this stuff right the fsdo so you do the have FSDO. a local yeah, fsdo yeah. though that, that you can contact and ask questions to and the thing is even if you don't get a legally binding response what you may get which i've heard a lot of people get is a 
conversation on the phone that is not legally binding, but explains how they're going to interpret the rules in your area because they're going to handle the cases yes. for you if you get in and, trouble. And that's the key is that you're actually talking to the actual people who will be the ones deciding to investigate and, and try to find you as opposed to the administrator. Like, hello. How you guys have worked in large companies. Yeah, the guy at the very top is always the super most informed one about the nitty gritty details of the project, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. All right. Anyway, enough about that. 